Feng Wei, the merciless Chinese monk with an endless lust for power to be the strongest martial artist in the world. Feng Wei is one of the most versatile characters in the game, with a plethora of tools favouring an offensive or aggressive playstyle. As well as the character being well rounded, Feng truly enables the player to express his or her personality. He is known for being one of the hardest characters to pin down in the game. Due to his stances and super evasive options, his monstrous pressure, fast high crushing low pokes, long range whiff punishment, parries, back tempo, shifting clouds, snake dash, sidestep 50 50. <laughs> but before we get into all that, let's go back to the beginning. Feng has a lot of very good pokes, including fast and frustrating lows. Back four, an almost homing mid at 12 frames fast, and he even has a down forward one that although comes out at 14 frames, the move is zero on block, which moulds itself to the rest of Feng's toolkit perfectly. He has a lot of very fast panic options, which put you out of harm's way, whilst potentially still dealing damage out to his opponent. At range zero, Feng has access to a scary sidestep 50-50, being sidestep 4 and sidestep down forward 3. When Feng has you pinned against the wall, you'd be pressed to find many characters with a better wall game. With many wall splatting mids, my favourite being sidestep 1 plus 2, being plus 1 on block. Not only that, but Feng arguably has the best wall bounce out of the entire class with down forward 2-2. Two two. Feng has a field day if opponents fail to escape. Another strength to Feng is that his toolkit can cater to any playstyle, whether it be in an aggressive or defensive playstyle, as well as anything in between. Unfortunately, we can't mention Feng's strengths without also mentioning his weaknesses. Feng is extremely weak to sidestep left. A lot of his key moves are beaten by sidestepping that way. Most of Feng's homing attacks come with a lot of wind-up to add to this bolt, so preventing stepping is not easy. Aggressive players wanting to get to range zero, where Feng excels, is very hard work. Although Feng has a massive toolkit at his disposal, a lot of other characters need to use less tools to succeed. You'll find yourself digging deep to win hard matchups. Another weakness is his while standing punishment. Other than his while standing fall, the rest of his while standing punishment is quite slow, and his launcher from crouching while standing three can also have very misleading range at times and can whiff at what seems point blank range. One three, in my opinion, is Feng's best 10 frame punish. Not only is it safe on block, it gives the best frame advantage on hit. Another plus is that the last hit of the string gives a knockdown on counter hit. If you're sharp though, it is possible to get a mini combo with back 1 plus 2, Feng's shoulder. 1-2-2 two, two is second on the list of 10 frame punishes. This is because the string can't be thrown out due to it being unsafe, and it isn't as plus on block either. But this string serves another purpose. If you hold back after connecting 1-2-2 two, two on hit, you can safely go into a back turn mix up with a plus 3 advantage. This is very good for Feng. 2-4 is a lesser used punish due to not giving any advantage on hit and still being unsafe. This string does have an optional third hit being a delayable knockdown mid. This gives a guaranteed shoulder. Saver players won't use this much, although there is an optional back turn transition with back 4-1, then you hold back. With no advantage on hit and taking a risk to even condition your opponent to respecting your back turn transition, this 10 frame string is just a no go for me. Back 1 plus 2 is Feng's 13 frame infamous Iron Mountain. A shoulder with a great range and a knockdown on normal hit. Make sure not to get this block though, it is minus 19 so you can be launched punished by the whole cast. At 15 frames we have your standard hot kick, or your substandard hot kick as Feng seems to be. This while standing two from Law here is minus 18, but as you can see, Feng's hop kick won't actually reach to punish it. His hop kick range is kind of on the stubby side. Unfortunately, he has to settle for back one plus two or other lesser punishes. 
So this is a follow-on from the thing, like the total thing gun that I'm making. Um, I'm gonna make it in this format instead because now the frame data is out. Um, it's just a lot easier than me rewriting down the frame data and then redisplaying the frame data when I don't really have to. Um, I know it sounds really lazy, but I actually made videos over the top of making this video. I actually ignored making this video because it was becoming quite valuable. Um, I'm not too fast at the whole uh, video editing thing, and because of that, uh, videos are just going to take so long to, to bring out. Um, my channel will suffer for it, and the people who are waiting, I know there's not many of you, but the people that are waiting for um, content, uh, you'd be waiting longer and then you know, it's just not good for the channel. So if this format's good enough for main man or um, Blasted Salami, uh, it's good enough for me. So This is the way it's going to be done. Um, I'm not going to be uh, Putting counter hit on just so everyone knows I'm going to be simulating counter hits with key charge only um, Yeah, we're gonna go through the whole of Feng's move list and I'm gonna, I'm gonna Go past the ones that I've already shown in the in the previous video in the other format, uh, like his 10 frames. Um, I'm going to go past them because I've already explained them. And apart from that, uh, let's get it going. So <clears throat> I'm going to try and edit this down if I can and uh, make it as short as possible, as, as short as a whole guide can be. Um, I'll try my best, but yeah, let's get going. So. This isn't his 10 frame, one one looks like a 10 frame and it's his first um, like real attack in the game other than his rage art and rage drive. Um, and usually your 10 frames are are in this part, but you know, I usually like the first real attack you can do, but for some reason he's one one first. So it makes it look like it's a 10 string, but it's actually not. Um we on counter hit the whole thing. No. Right, so <clears throat> this move on block is minus eleven. Uh, on counter hit, if they block the uh, first jab and then they get hit by the second jab, like the more lunging jab, they get counter hit for quite a nice chunk. Yeah, uh, 25 damage for a counter hit is no joke, and everyone knows that Feng's damage is quite high, especially in season three. Um, that wasn't even optimal, and we're not even at the wall yet. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, this move is it's one of them moves which inexperienced maybe Feng players, maybe like you'd catch people in lower ranks, um, you'd probably catch them more with it. Uh, most people are unlikely to push buttons after a block jab because obviously you're still plus one and it's still technically your turn. But I suppose this would work if someone tries to maybe down forward one, I'm not sure, or if they try and like get under you with like a low kick. So people who don't want to respect your jab on block, which is plus one, um, they will try and go under it, uh, God, like that. This would probably beat that out. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think it's interruptible. But most people generally won't try and interrupt it if they're smart. Uh, obviously, not everyone in tech is smart, so you will get away with it. But, um, Another reason to use this move is you can cover yourself, but in Season 2, I think, or definitely in Season 1, uh, this was, this move was a bit buffer, it's actually been nerfed in this season, so before, when you got the counter hit, so I can, when you got that counter hit, if you did the follow on, which was, if you did the 2, so if you did bang bang, you would still be able to pick up the combo, in uh, this season, um, if you get the counter hit and you do the two, it cancels it. <clears throat> so, in a way, you're not doing this move for the counter hit properties. Um, you're more doing it to try and you could maybe end around like that because they will try and they will try and jab after the one. Um, but overall, it's not a great string. Uh, you could probably make a little, have a little like mind game here, so you could go bang. I'm gonna do one if they block it, and then, and if they want, they think they're gonna press buttons again. You can do the two. Um, so it's a little bit like that, but it's not great. So we're just gonna move on. Uh, this is ten frame. I've already explained that. 
this is his best 10 frame. Uh, this is his trash 10 frame, I'd say, out of all the ones he has. So, <clears throat> Peacock Sweep. So, this move, primarily, I use it as a wall ender. I'll show you how that works. You can delay the last hit for more damage, uh, so it's unscaled or less scaled, I think. <clears throat> um, and then, obviously, if you end the wall combo like this, you're in back turn, and you can you can mix up again, like things like that. You know what I mean? So, it's a good option. Uh, it's not his best option or his most damaging, but it is an option. Um, the other thing you can do, the other way you can use it, uh, I don't think experience players really use it but you could is the second hit right let me just show you what it's like if you just go for the whole thing and people will block this by the way so don't um don't throw this out too often because you're basically giving away your turn you're giving away free damage it says minus 12 but look where thing is he's at minus 12 so he can't move can't duck and he can uh law could just down forward to us here or he could even junk it out of this i believe so that's not a position you want to be in but what you can do is you can cancel the last hit and it cancels quite quickly, yeah? And you could maybe bait someone out. They will probably duck. And if they duck, you can hit them with uh, the mids that Feng has from back there. Okay? That's how this is intended to work. So <clears throat> that's how I'd use that move. It's not fantastic, but Feng has a lot of moves which aren't great and he has loads of versions of the same move they carry they they have the same purpose some are better than others so it's up to you what kind of thing do you want to be do you want to be the crazy thing which uh throws out the odd weird move here and there you know like all these obscure moves like that um or do you want to be the more poke heavy safe safe thing you know it's up to you but it's still a move it still has its uses so it, obviously, it's there to be used, but it's up to you how you want to use it. If someone else finds another way of using that, let me know. Um, this is Mad Windmill. This is the next move I'm going to cover. This is a Tilda 2 1 1. And when I say a Tilda, I'll see if I can display this. I'll rub my finger, if you like, slide my finger across from 2 to 1. That's how, that's how I believe a Tilda should be done in on pad. Uh, you can do it really fast with your fingers if you if you play like this, yeah. But I play on, with my thumb only on the buttons. Uh, some people find that weird, but again, it's how how you play the game. Um, it's a very high damaging launcher. It's hit confirmable. I don't think that's even a combo. <clears throat> it's hit confirmable. You can't get that, so you have to always follow up with the screw, or you have to always follow up with that. Yeah, or you're doing yourself out of damage. And this wasn't even optimal when I'm at 92 damage, okay? So this is a serious, this is a serious launcher. But it's 24 frames, it's a bit slow. Uh, I, I, you, if you went for this to whiff punish someone, uh, you would probably, due to the range, it's not got fantastic range. I would always go for this first because it's two frames faster and it's it, this move hits at. I think it's range 3.5 or 3. It hits from far. So why would you use this if you could be using this? Uh, if you could be using that, you know? <clears throat> but again, it's just another whiff punisher. Uh, one way you could use it, they've made it so you can use it with sidestep now. So if you're coming in and you've conditioned the opponent to get used to this sidestep low, uh, you could go, yeah, you could mix that up with a mid instead but again he has this as an option which is faster so you know it's up to you it's up to you it's not as much damage by by a long shot yeah i'm at 56 damage at the wall but if i hit him with this i don't follow up with a jab it's like a lot of damage more yeah i'm at 99 damage so yeah that's what this move is for it's heavily hit confirmable like I don't even have to rush. I can go, oh, okay, I got the hit. Oh, boom. Like, there is some serious amount of time. So for that amount, that, in that respect, the move is decent in that respect. If you do catch on with this, you can either leave it, you're at plus eight, and therefore crouch. I wouldn't use it like that. If you get the hit, you confirm it. Okay, so you go bang. 
bang. You have loads of time. I'm just being a bit special. So, moving on. <clears throat> now, this is another move that was buffed in Season 3. It actually was made safer. I think it was unsafe before, which I don't, I don't know why that would ever be unsafe. It's like the slowest movie has. 34 frames to impact. Um, they've made it a launcher now, and it doesn't matter whether you go into back turn or you leave it and you face forward. Um, the whole extension is a tilde 3-4. Uh, free, so you get the low. Uh, I wouldn't ever recommend throwing the low out because I'm pretty sure. Oh my god, how can I get him to block this quickly? Because I'm pretty sure. Okay, so it's, it's seriously launch punishable, but you're using the you, you're not intending on using the low. You're you're praying they know of the low so you can get more mental advantage like you can go he blocks it and then you block it again so if i make law block this the he might be thinking okay there's a low coming if i duck i could get a back turn hop kick yeah that's that's yeah he's on block he's on um guard all but when you're here they might think the low's coming you've got mids that, now, this is what this move is now intended for, yeah? If people if, you, if people are clocking onto that and they're clocking on that you you keep um, using this as a mix-up, they might want to retaliate. And in that case, do go for it because it is a launcher. But, again, you are running the risk. There is the chance that they could. But if you want to, they could block it. But if you want to be safer, you could instead go, OK, I'm at minus two now. If they start disrespecting uh, this situation, You've got sidestep, uh, you can move away, and if they do do that, you can move away and launch. Yeah, it's, you can use it, as, it's got many, many applications, but, <clears throat> excuse me, its main application is for mental advantage uh, with the mix-up between them two, and also you can pick people up, you can, you can combo with it, and you can tech track people with it, and I'll just quickly demonstrate that now. I do have another... Um, video on this so I believe I'm the one that discovered this I do have another video on this but um, I'm not gonna do it too many times now I'm just gonna do it once and then if you want to see the video I'll put it in the description okay so if you combo from facing forward that's if you don't decide to um, go back turn you can I believe you can combo like this this is the only way if I can get it right oh my god That's for damage, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and that's for wall carry, and that will that will splat properly, and you can um, do your enders. Okay, so, but the best way to combo off it is back turn. I would suggest always going for back turn on this because if you do get the hit, it's unlikely, but if you do get the hit, you're in for a lot more damage than you would be if you if you did this. Yeah, <clears throat> but just so we go through this, it's in the it's in the video. So that two one down back one four, and then whatever gets you to the wall. Okay, uh, that's that move. That's that's that move in a nutshell. Uh, what else have we got? So handspring, and I actually found out the other day. Now this frame that is up. I didn't realise that the more active frames a move has before it hits an opponent, the more plus frames it has. So that's, that was plus four. At that range, it was plus five. See if I can make it higher. Plus nine, and that plus nine is the most you can have, and that's like a tip range. And people say that Feng doesn't have any approach tools, but he has Crouch Dash One. If that's an approach tool, if I have ever seen one in my life, right? I'm coming away. I'm coming from like range, nearly range four. You know, and I'm coming in with a safe um, mid. You know, that is an approach tool. I don't see how that how that isn't an approach tool. Look at the look at the range it has. Yeah. But this is another approach tool. I'd say people say he doesn't have them, but he does. This move guarantees hits on the ground off that that move, and guarant is guaranteed a hit on the ground on that. <clears throat> that is its primary. That's its primary application is to get you free damage off of uh, that move and that move. But 
you can use it, um, like I say, to approach the approach the opponent. It crushes highs. Uh, it's good for Oki. So if I end a combo like this, yeah, okay, that was awful, but. Okay, for some reason, Law isn't blocking it, but as they get up, they block it and you're in their face again. And you're at minus four. Yeah? So then you can carry on your offence. So that's its primary... Uh, <clears throat> its primary application. But another way I use it... Uh, just Sorry, just to reiterate what plus frames you get. The further away you are when you use it, the more plus frames you get. Okay, plus six. Plus nine. And the plus nine is the max I've got off it before. I'm trying to set into guard all. I don't think this move is plus in any situation. I don't think it matters where. Okay, so it's plus one at tip range. That is that is decent. But the further away you are when that hits, the more. I don't think I'll get plus two out of it. That's for sure. Minus one. So where are we at range four? It's zero. So the best case scenario, you're going to get plus one, but I wouldn't use it as a pressure tool in that sense. Just use it to get in and continue your offense. Obviously, the further away you do it, being zero, if someone reacts to that, the palm's going to going to um, it's either going to beat their jab or it's going to trade with the jab, and you're going to get um, your count here. But I'm going to move on to that move shortly. So that's that. <clears throat> what else have we got? Well, Iron Shield, uh, you don't really see it used too often. Um, it's may mainly, well, it's basically a parry. You're not going to, it's it's 21 frames. You're not going to punish anyone with it. Uh, you could throw it out randomly and you could hope for a parry. But the main, the main reason you use this is for a parry if you can bait it out. And the main moves you would bait it out with is, are these. I can say I'm going to go for a full guide and how you use these moves. So... Hopefully this helps someone out and shows them how, how this attack should be used. So, if you're going to bait someone out to jab, obviously this is good against Law. There's a lot of jabs. He also has a lot of kicks. But Steve, Brian, any any opponent like that, that or you you know that any any character really, but any opponent you know checks a lot with jabs after something. They they just get really antsy and they need to punish with something. Yeah. After this, this is a bit of an obscure move, right? <clears throat> People don't really know, well, this isn't used often, so when it is, people are like, oh, what's that about? And then they'll try and punish with a jab or something, and then you come with a parry, right? Anything minus seven, I'd say, you can parry. So that's one setup. Down for two twos, another setup. Don't forget, this is all a risk, so you're minus 13 if it gets blocked. That's another setup. Uh, that's another setup. Uh, that's another setup. Basically anything that's safe, I mean someone's coming in jabbing, I'll show you what the counter hit looks like, sorry, what the uh, parry looks like. Uh, la, 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 we'll make a little jab. So I hope then. Oh god. So that was an optimal combo, that wasn't an optimal combo, but that is, you dash up, it can be quite difficult to do. I don't think in season three you need to dash up anymore because he's got forward, forward, one plus two, uh, and he's got forward two, uh, forward one plus two, and it, it it just messes him up. So the best way to do it, I think you can do it literally just from walking forward. Now I did do it from walking forward the other day. Come on. Okay. The best way to do it is to dash forward. It can be tricky. But with practice, it can be done. Okay? So there's that. That is what this move is intended for, to bait out. So you can bait an uh, opponent's reaction and you can get your you, you can get your turn back or you can you can get a launch. Okay? Uh, let's stop Law from annoying me now. Right, what else have we got? <clears throat> right, this move has a really long, stupid name. And it has no purpose in this game, apart from to pick up the opponent. Like, I don't know if there's tech traps for it, so, oh sorry, like spring kick traps or a way you can refloat the opponent, but the main the main use I'd use it for is if I desperately need to get 
um, a pickup on the combo, which isn't too easy. Yeah, that's the only use I'd use it for if I'm desperate. But you don't have to use that. You can use, I'm pretty sure, you can dash in and do that. So why would you use this? Uh, another downside to this move, it is the same, it still is punishable as a side step four. And there's no launch, all you get is plus six. I don't, I don't really under, and it even looks like it. Yeah, it is minus 31. So don't be sidestepping and doing that because you might as well just sidestep and do that. The risk reward balance is better. Uh, this move is just pretty terrible. Unless it gives you like, they need to patch it to give you a, a I don't know. I don't see how you can make this move better apart from if you whiff this, you get a launch on counter hit. If they made it like war drums maybe, at the right right range, God, God knows, I don't know. We need to just... We need to just laugh this move off because it's not a good move, right? So forget that. Don't even, don't even put it in your, in your repertoire, right? Just forget it. Right, Ball's Tusk. This looks like nothing. Uh, it looks like a, quite a terrible string, and in essence, it is quite terrible. You never want to finish this on block because you're getting launched uh, with Feng's shoulder in general. It's launch punishable. But <clears throat> what you can do is, if you want to add this to your game to throw the opponent off. Uh, you can go, oh, I'm going to do one ever so often. So you're playing, yeah, you're doing your business, you're doing what you do, and you throw this out ever so often. And you, you condition the opponent to see this. Yeah, it's 17 frames, not fast, but you condition them to see this. Uh, they can get out of that, by the way. So don't think that's a launch, because it's not. I've seen people, I've never, I've never launched someone out of that. Sorry, I've never launched someone out of this. It doesn't even it doesn't even combo. Yeah? It's just it's just forget that. Pretend it, pretend it doesn't look like that, because you, you won't get the launch. Alright? So its main use is you throw this out uh, occasionally, and then occasionally you go bang bang. And you're still plus you're still minus five, so yes, it's not unsafe. Yeah? And then because you're throwing this out quite often this can also be delayed quite a lot so that's full speed looks like a, <laughs> like a train full speed yeah that's delayed um <clears throat> i don't even know on the second hit what do you get nothing so but what you can do is someone starts blocking this and then they start pressing buttons after this you can go they block the first hit and the second hit hits you get the shoulder for free and you can confirm this yeah that's what it's for so you can keep if you, uh, it's a bit like Armour King's uh, free, forward 3-4-3, three, three, right? So you throw one out every so often, it's safe. Uh, occasionally you throw two out, and then if you get a hit on the two, you throw you throw the last hit out, yeah? For big damage. That's what it's for, okay? Uh, you can also use it as a wall ender, not its highest wall ender, but you can. Uh, but instead you do 4-2-1, and then a manual back one plus two instead of going like that. Okay, I'll just quickly demonstrate that. That's without it being delayed. Apologies for uh, people needing to run over to the wall every time, but this is how you'd get more damage. Because you do a manual shoulder and you get 61 damage opposed to, I think it was like 54. <coughs> so there's that. Uh, this move is a long range with Punisher. It's his best with Punisher, in my opinion. It's one of the longest range with Punishers in the game. It's 21 frames, so it's quite slow. Uh, it hits from like range three. It hits from far away. The tip range. Let me see if I can get it. It's about. Oh my god. So about three. This is if you really, if you know, someone has whiffed. That's this is this is what you use. Yeah. This is highest with. This is highest damage with Punisher. And an optimal combo would look like this. To the wall. You're at 78 damage before you even hit the wall. So that's big damage. Um, another way I use this is because it has a second hit. By the way, don't throw this out on block because it's launch punishable. Um, I think there's a way you can catch people. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can catch people as they get up and they can't block. So as you can see, this is set to block stuff that isn't natural uh, it's risky but it can be done I can even hit it 
yeah. So you can catch people tech rolling um, <clears throat> or getting up incorrectly and you can get a launch, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'd stick to, if you get that, stick to the free damage, or if you get that, stick to that because you're safe and it's still a launcher. Um, but what I use it for, if I'm using it as a whiff punisher, is just a poke. And 21 frames is slow, but at that range, you know, it's not, not great damage, but you're at plus seven. And because even on block, because on blocks that, they're going to hesitate, you're at minus three. Yes, yeah, so you've got plenty of time to get around. Because of this, they're not always going to retaliate. But this as a poke on its own is actually really decent. You're at plus seven, you're in their face. So you could use this as another approach tool. Anyone who says thing hasn't got approach tools, I, I don't really know what they're talking about. You can you can make approach tools. You can make things like approach tools. Is what, what I'm getting at, yeah. If you're at plus seven, and you're in their face again, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, forward 4-3 four, is normal hit combo. That hasn't got to be a counter hit. That's all it is. You get a knockdown. Uh, and you can, as they get up, you can, you can continue pressure because of the way they knock down. Uh, okay. It looks like you get that for free. I think they can probably roll out of the way of that. Uh, it's not fast. 18 frames is quite slow. Uh, this is more used as a keep out tool for me. Uh, it has another extension I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to talk about that as well as that. So I'm going to talk about these moves together. So you've got two no Tornado Stomp and you've got Tornado Sweep. Okay. Uh, I think this, sorry, this version used to be launch punishable. Or it was it was more punishable than minus 12. They've now made it less punishable. So it is an option, but it is quite slow. This is seeable. So you, if they, if, if someone thinks they're going to, you're going to do the low, you can forget about the low. Yeah. Uh, and you can get back up and you can still block the mid. Uh, on normal hit, this launches on clean hit. So if you catch someone thinking it's going to be a mid, you can get the launch. Uh, everything that Fane does is high damage for some reason. Um, but I mainly use forward four on its own as a keep out move. Yeah, this has like deceptive range and it can it, People have been attacking and it ignores their attack. Because his legs come out quite far. I don't know what the hitbox is on this, but it does have more range than you think. And then when you're here, this is a normal hit launcher. So instead of using this, you can use it, but instead of, I don't really use it for that purpose, I use 4-4 on its own. Maybe at lower ranks, you could use this, throw it out as like a 50-50, where people haven't quite conditioned themselves to uh, fuzzy guard or uh, block things like that, yeah? But the main use I'd use it for at higher ranks and at higher levels of play is you're using that. And you get the launch. Yeah, and you've already got more damage than what that did. So, the way you confirm this launch on a normal hit launch is this. So you go, okay, I've got the launch. You've got plenty of time. There's no rush. Yeah, you can really confirm the launch. So, let me do it away from him. So you get the launch. You hold down, down forward, whilst down in one, but you do it smoothly. So you go, yeah. Uh, ignore my combos, they're terrible. Uh, <clears throat> that's what you want to use this for, just to keep out. And you can also bait people with it. So you go like that, you get blocked, you're at minus five, you come back, and if they attack you, you're going to get a launch. You can, you can, you can confirm all of this. You can confirm you got the. You can confirm you got the uh, combo. You can confirm you got the. Oh my god, why can't I speak? You can confirm you got the launch, and you can do that. Or you can confirm you got blocked, and you can move away to safety. Yeah, you can even sidestep. Yeah. Um, or if someone comes in, you can get them with the sweep. Or someone comes in, you can bait them, see they're coming in, and get them with wild stand free, which is another launcher. <laughs> so, uh, Feng plays with a lot of risk. Yeah, you don't have to play him risky, you can play him uh, nice and <clears throat> safe and he's still really strong being safe, but his max, this sounds a bit silly because this sounds like it's for every character, it's the same, but his max uh, capabilities come from taking risk. Like, small 50-50s, and if the opponent guesses wrong once, they get, they get blown up, basically. 
So we're going to forget about them two because I've just done them two. Okay, we're going to forget about four, four, four. So Tide of the Claw is a homing safe at minus nine. So you lose your turn. Uh, it's a bit slow. It's at 19 frames. So it's not the fastest homing move you've got. Uh, I usually just use that board just pretend it's homing because it, it does track pretty well. Um, but forward four again, it's his main screw for his for his uh, combos. Yeah, this is his most damaging screw. Uh, I think you do this screws as well. I don't know how it even. Oh god. Yes, yeah, so you've got this. Uh, and this. <clears throat> so this, forward one plus two, Tiger Claw, safe, high, homing, normal hit launcher. So if you sidestep, you can use this as just a normal hit launcher. In that respect, this move is good. It's a bit slow, it's not the best homing move in the game, but it's not the worst by any means. Yeah? It's really good. That's basically what this is for, as a screw move, yeah, or a home move to catch people step in, and if you catch them, you're going to get launched. They're going to get launched. You can use it as a whip punisher as well. It's got really, really good range. This move is overall very good. I like the animation because it's just the animations of thing are quite beautiful. But really good move. Okay, if I'm going to go through shooting cards, I'm going to go through every one of these, every one of these options in one go. Okay. So shifting clouds is basically, <coughs> excuse me, shifting clouds is basically uh, a high risk but kind of medium reward mix up. So what you do is say you're pressuring and you're doing what things do. You've 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 conditioned the opponent to not attack. Yeah, when you're attacking because you're plus one, you're plus six on hit. Say you get a down forward one. And usually most people would just down forward one again or go for a mix up. This is to simulate your attacking the opponent. This is this is how I'd explain this move. People might disagree with me, but this is how I'd use it. So you're plus frames, you're plus six. People are gonna expect you to continue your offense. And what you do, you're at plus eight, and then you come in and they think, oh my god, he's attacking me. Then they realise that you're not attacking him, you're just waving your hands about like a madman. And then when they come, when they try and attack, you're already attacking, and you're going to knock them down, or you're going to. You have, they have to deal with one of your options. Yeah, so you're at plus frames. You come in. What am I going to hit him with? I'm hitting with a low. Am I coming in with a plus on block high? Yeah. Let me get into block, and I'll show you the different properties of this. So we're going to start with um, shifting clouds free. Uh, it's not very widely well widely used. Why am I putting count here on? It's not very widely used, but. Uh, it is a good move in its own right. Uh, so this is plus eight. This is plus eight, yeah. This is a, this is seriously plus on block. Yeah, this is your turn all day long. And they have to respect what you're gonna do next, yeah? You're at plus eight, you're coming in with a low. You're at plus eight, you're coming in with a mid. Yeah, if they try to step, <clears throat> they've got, they haven't got many frames to work with. This is 19 frames, sorry. It's not a frame trap, but Due to range, they'd probably miss their first jab. You could probably launch them still. They can. There's not much they can do. Yeah, this is what this move is for. So you got high. If you start doing this a lot, this isn't used much. But you're at plus six if this gets hit. You come in and you're plus eight again, and then you can do what you're gonna do. So that's a high. If they start ducking that, uh, show it up. You've got uh, shifting clouds one. So this is called Bao Dan Po, I hope I didn't get that wrong. And this move is minus 14 on block, has pushback, you can get launched, uh, especially at the wall, it has a lot less pushback. Um, obviously, you're at minus 14 and you're suddenly a lot closer. For starters, Law could easily get 3 plus 4, he could even get 3 plus 4 out in the open probably, because 3 plus 4 is just a pretty dumb move. Um, <clears throat> so on here, this is a normal hit launcher again. Hit a thing has a lot of these. So you dash in, forward one plus two. Uh, I don't know how to launch on that because this for some reason. I haven't played thing in a while now. I just love the character. Don't ever do that combo, but it works. So this is a normal hit launcher. Pretty unsafe, has pushback. You don't really get it punished too often. Uh, 
pretty decent option. Out in the open, not at the wall. Remember that. Out in the open, never use it at the wall. He used to have more pushback, but they've reduced it. Uh, another way to pick up off this is you dash in. Uh, that really shitty move again. Uh, it's so shit, I can't even get it to hit. Yeah, there we go. It's like a floating tool, that. That 1 plus 4. It's pretty terrible. Um, so there's that. Uh, a better option, there's no reason for you to do this. There's no reason to, for you to use that, because you're minus 14. You might as well use that, which is minus 13. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but the difference between minus 13 punishes and minus 14 punishes could be a launch, or it could be you take a little bit of damage, you could take a minus 12, yeah? So, <clears throat> why would you use that if you condition people to block... Uh, to, they can duck that. People start ducking that if you if you use this a lot. Use that. Yeah, this is a launch anyway, and this is a normal hit launch again. It's like a it's like a generic downfall too, but out of the stance. Not as much damage. The pick up so much easier, and you still get 84 damage. The best way to play te Tay Second is simple. Why would you use this? Sorry. Why would you use that? And you can use that. Not as punishable. You get an easy launch. Yeah, I'm not even trying. So there's that. And again, just to reiterate, Shifting Clouds is a mix-up stance. Okay, you're at plus range. You have to be at plus range when you use this, or you're... It's not very good if you don't. <clears throat> okay. So he also has a low. Now this is a good one. This is a good low. Yeah, nice chunky low. Um, I don't know what the actual low comes out at. It says 20 frames, but I don't know if it is 20 frames. So you're at plus two. Any plus frames is good for Feng, because he's got he's got so many options to stop people coming in and hurting him, okay? So this again, you've got that normal more normal knockdown uh, high, which is plus eight on block. Uh, you get 49 damage. I think you can even get four, four, three if you're fast. All right, you can continue your plus nine, yeah? <coughs> Uh, you've got the normal normal hitting launcher that's a mid, it's minus 14. You've got another mid, which is like a down forward two, let's say. You've got a down forward two out of shifting clouds. Uh, and you've got the low. Now the low on counter here gives you a free knockdown. You do get a free you do get a free four four three out of this. 48 damage. If you want to keep it simpler, um, you can just go for the stomp. Uh, you might have dash in when you do that. Okay. I am being... Right, 43 damage. But the 443 has more range. So, I'd say go for the 443. Yeah? 48 damage, easy. Easy peasy. And if they get up, I think after that you still get another stomp. It's like a mix-up, so... Oh no, okay, they rolled away. So, there's that. Now, the other option, which doesn't really get used much, is this, because it's fucking awful. So, uh, I, I don't see why they even put this move in the game. <clears throat> it says it's a uh, normal hit. It's not. So, I don't really, you can't confirm this, you have to go for the whole thing, yeah? If I go, oh, okay, I got the hit. That, that would be the way this would this would be a better attack. If you could confirm that, which starts with a mid, it's a safe option from this. He needs that, yeah? This is minus 13. On block, uh, I think that's minus 13. That's minus 14. The only good option is that, which leaves you in a good state, which is plus eight, but it's high, yeah? He needs this to, con to, to cover his options. I think they need to make that a hit confirmable string. Yeah, starts with a mid. You condition with this. And then, not like that, but you're in the game and you condition them to respect that. And then when they start ducking because they're thinking, okay, I'm going to low carry this bastard, you go bang, bang, boom. Well, why isn't that hit confirmable? Why would you want to throw that whole thing out? It's duckable. So I think they should make this confirmable, but it's not. So bang, bang, bang. That's what it should be like, but never mind. This is what we get. <clears throat> so moving on at Shifting Clouds. Oh, another thing before I, sorry, before I 
move all along. Shifting clouds, you can also mix up. Uh, you can move into back. You can, you can really like, so you can come forward again. Oh, no, I'm going to talk about shifting clouds first. We're going to Kenbo later when it comes up. <clears throat> so, as, long, as well as you coming in and using these options, yeah, if you've really created hesitation and they're scared, because Feng is a scary character, yeah, you can then go into his uh, back tempo options as well by pressing back in the stance. Some people know this, it's not like open stance, but see, you see it looks the same as this. You hold back your in while you're waving your hands. You go to the same stance as that, and suddenly you've got even more lows. You've got even more options, yeah? But. Again, I'll go into that later. <clears throat> so, let's move on to a much more useful attack. And I'm moving to the wall, so this is a wall bounce move. Down 4 2 2, probably the best wall bounce move in the game. <clears throat> really high damage. Uh, it's a parry bait. Um, it's completely safe. It's mid mid. It looks a lot like this. But if you dash in and go like that. They can block the first hit and still get hit by the second hit. And I'll show you just like a normal damaging combo for this because it's just moving into it. That was me not even trying. So you can get even more damage than that. This is how good this wall bounce is. Typical, I can't get it whilst I'm recording. It has to be further away. Okay, I can't hit it, but it is possible to get two shoulders. But you just you can see the damage potential. This is big damage for a launch. At the wall, 36 damage for a launch to begin with is massive. So, <clears throat> really, really good move. You can just throw this out. It's pretty slow, but as a whiff punisher, if at the wall, it's big damage. Okay? That was awful. <clears throat> so, lift kick. This move's completely safe. Again, another parry bait. Uh, it looks a lot like while standing four. Um, you can get it out of crouch quickly. Yeah, like that. So it looks, it could basically be, it's not a launching while standing four, but it looks the same. <clears throat> its main application is if you're coming in on the opponent, yeah? Instead of using size step four, it's a mix up for size step four. It's a normal hitting launcher. Yeah, completely safe. Really, really good move. The only thing is, is you have to be in their face. You have to be here. If you're out here, that nah, did hit, but it's not. It's got no range. You have to literally be where Feng excels. Yeah, range zero in their face. <coughs> so, sorry, I've got a really bad throat today, and I haven't drunk anything yet. So, <coughs> down for four. Uh, it's a mid poke, 15 frames, it's not too great. Uh, it's got pretty good range, I'd say. He steps, takes a step forward. It's not awful, but it's not great. Uh, and even though he's got plus range, he's at plus five and he's a range 2.5. So you can't do much with it. I'd say don't ever use this move on its own. If you're gonna use it, use it like this. I think that's minus 10, minus 11, but people won't attack because you've got this. Whatever you do, do not throw this out you can see it's minus 19 on block. Don't ever throw this out randomly. You, it's not worth the risk. So if so, people can interrupt that, the second hit. He does go under, but if they block it, you, you, it's goodbye to thing, yeah? So the main use for this is uh, like combos, like little mini combos like this. This move, it's his new wall carry in season three. Uh, the way I'd explain that is this. Yeah, he really suffered from bad wall carry in season two. Now he's got this move. We're loving life. <clears throat> but uh, this move picks up. Yeah. It, it also is a wall ender. I'd like to just say, a uh, wall ender that flips over. Yeah, really, still high damage and it flips over. So this is just an all-round 
good string, but don't throw it out in the open. This has its applications and make sure you use it for the applications only. Because if you use it for anything else, uh, you're not going to do very well. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> no, I haven't got water up here. So, this is his only mid homing move. Pretty slow. Again, Feng wants to be up in their face. He's got back four when people are up in his face. If you're up in their, in their grill, yeah? That's why his homing moves are pretty slow. Because he does, he is weak to, uh, to size up left, but he has pretty good moves to keep keep him in check. Uh, down forward 3-4. Four, four. Down forward 3 plus 4 is a long range homing mid. You want to use it range just under range 3, and you get your guaranteed hits. This is a very this is still a good move, but it's not fantastic as homing moves go. And you can use it as a, a screw move, but there's better options. Okay. Right, this is one of Feng's key lows, probably my one of my favourite lows in the game. I harass people with this so much. It's basically <clears throat> it's minus one on here. It's not fantastic, but uh, it's quite safe, I think it's minus 12 on block. Uh, you can stay crouched, so if you hit someone you're at minus one, but generally if people get hit they don't really uh, want to retaliate. And then from there, you can do the usual stuff that you'd, you'd be doing. I think you can even go, yeah, you can even sidestep out of this. Down two, uh, up forward two. So you have a lot of options. Minus one seems bad for a low, minus one is good. There's a lot worse lows out there than that. You. Good lows give you plus frames. Great lows give you plus frames. Good lows keep you sort of minus two, minus one, that sort of area, zero. That's where you want to be with a low because you can you can continue your offense. Yeah. Uh, on counter hit, this gives you a knockdown. You get a free stomp if you crouch cancel by tapping up. Uh, it can be difficult, but it can be done. Uh, you can also get a little mini juggle. Uh, if you crouch cancel again and do uh, so, you, so when you're down, you tap up and then quickly tap down again, down for one plus two. So I'll just re air that again. Hopefully, I can do it. And then it's not much wall carry, but hopefully, if you do it with the right spacing, there is a way you you, you can basically get people um, to wall spat and you can get bigger damage, but. Like I say, down two on counter hit. Uh, you can continue pressure, or you can crouch cancel and get a mini juggle, or you can crouch cancel and get a stomp for easy damage. Yeah. But its main, it crouch. Uh, sorry, it crushes highs instantly. Yeah. Look how quickly it's in crouching stance. It's like as soon as I press it, crouch. It goes crouch stand crouch for some reason, but it literally crouches high. It uh, crushes highs instantly. So you're coming in. You're doing your feng stuff, what you do. That's what this moves for, just to harass. <clears throat> really, really good life. Uh, I've now just got rid of that. Why do I do that? Where are we? I know this is like, it seems like a bit of a lecture. Um, I hope you stick around for it. So, point in heavens, it's not a fantastic move. On counter hit, full thing. Uh, this is a 14 frame low, so if you're at plus 4, uh, where, are we, where will we be at plus 4? Plus 4, someone retaliates, you're going to trade with a jab, you're going to get the counter here. Okay? I usually use just down 4 on its own, because 0 on block, that's really good for Feng. It's only a little bit of chip damage, but if someone retaliates with a jab, which people do after that, because it's such a, a minuscule, people think it's like nothing to it. Back 1. Yeah, this is why I mainly use this one. Stop people getting uh, thinking it's their turn when it's not. It's my turn. But this used to be used. It can be used as little mini combos, like I showed earlier. It has like little pickup potential. <clears throat> but it used to be for wall carry because his wall carry used to be absolutely awful. Uh, let me try and demonstrate that. That's what that if you really wanted to push for the wall and you couldn't reach by using this, which you can on this stage, but if I was across the stage I wouldn't be able to. This does have push like does push the opponent and does splat normally. 
uh, down back one two and down back one four. So thing is a slippery bastard as everyone knows. Um, say if someone's coming in with their attack, say you get one two one two blocked, someone's gonna think it's their go, you're only minus one. Like if they retaliate, you could technically still get them with that if they down forward one. Uh, if someone's gonna jab, you can go under. That crushes highs. Excuse me. <clears throat> this crushes highs. Um, so if someone thinks it's their go, you crush their jab or their high attack, their kick or whatever, and they get a knockdown for 30 damage, 35 damage. That's good damage. It's a bit like lays back two four. Same thing. Uh, this move is also a screw move. Uh, what else does it have? This move, I believe, spikes down. Uh, I think it. I used to think it was hit confirmable. Like there, I really took my time. But I think it is hit confirmable. But you have to be sharp. Yeah, you have to really. It might be count. Yeah, like there. I, I took my time. That was full speed. Uh, and that was a little bit slower. But this main this main move is just for screws, just for screwing combos. Um, this move is like a like a plus frame version. If you don't want to knock them down, you're at plus seven, you're in the face. So if you predict a retaliation, you go under, and you're you're in their face again. Yeah, you're at plus seven, and you're in grab range. You're at plus seven. Uh, you're in you're in a position to continue your offense, obviously. Uh, I think you get a knockdown if someone. All oh, right, yeah, you do get a knockdown on counter hit if someone uh, doesn't respect the second hit, because it's delayable, like like that one. They're both delayable options. I swear you used to get a knockdown properly with this and get a free shoulder, but apparently not. I mainly just use down back one on its own. This move has a lot of applications, yeah? You can steal your turn back. It's like a jab, like a uh, dick jab, uh, but without it being a special mid. If you predict someone's gonna come at you, it's a little bit slower, it crushes highs. Also, you can go into shifting clouds or back campo with it, yeah? So you get your plus frames, plus four. People predict you're gonna come out with one of these. Instead, you come out with that and then the plethora of options that Feng has. Okay? Right. <clears throat> this move ain't fantastic. Uh, small damage, not a chunky low. Um, it's crushes highs, I believe. On counter hit, it's only minus 11 on block, which is nothing. That's good. Uh, the way it works is you fuse the whole string. Uh, if someone tries to Sorry, if someone tries to punish the first one, they get hit by the second one. Uh, and if they try to punish the second one, they get hit by the third, which is in mid. The whole string is safe. If you do two, minus 16, they block it. So you always, if you're going to do the second one, you might as well cover yourself. The, the way that it can be used is if you crush a high, say if you're coming in with your usual stuff, yeah? On counter hit, the whole, the first two are natural and you get a knockdown. Uh, you get a launch, yeah. So it is risky, but if you're gonna, if someone's gonna retaliate, you can come in, and you get your, you get your launch. That second hit can't be blocked on counter hit, but it is risky. If it gets blocked, I don't think. No, you can't confirm that it's been blocked. So you have to go either all in, or you do, you do one, yeah, or you do two. That's that's the only way. It's not great. This also works as a. Um, a wall combo, but again, you've got this, which flips over the 59 damage. Uh, 51 damage, you get that. Look, like that was a hard knockdown there, but yeah, this does have use, but and it's a little bit obscure. The baby tantrum, but it has actually has all right range for a like, but I wouldn't use it too much. I'd probably use it and then if people think you're only going to do one you do two and you get the launch yeah 
uh, Pearson Arrow or the James Brown. <clears throat> this is probably one of the best lows in the game. It is launch punishable. Uh, yeah, minus 15. You have to be very sharp. They would have to be sharp to punish it. I've never actually been launch punished by it. Um, I've never been launch punished by using it, but uh, you can get launch punished, so be aware. Plus four on block is really good. And again, Feng doesn't have any approach tools. Down back four, where are you? You're at plus four, you can stay crouched. Yeah? You're at plus four and you're staying crouched. They retaliate. They're going to get counter here. It's little, little things like this. I don't know why people say that. So, look where I am. You get four three of the Crushes high straight away. Good range. Really good round ender. People think that you're not you're not anywhere near like in a killing range. You come in, boom. Really good damage as well. But for, for launch punishing, for launch punishable, for a launch punishable move, it has to have something with it. Apparently a tip range is plus five. That's even better. Yeah? Can't get that again. See? Plus five. I think it forces crouch. As you can see, Law is not in a crouch staggered state. Really, really good move. Uh, I don't really want to speak about this. Move too much. Uh, down back four, I don't really use it. Uh, at lower ranks, you could probably get away with it. But it's not it's not something you should be using too much. The way you combo off it uh, easily is crouch uh, while standing one after the launch. Yeah, it is a launcher. It is homing, but when people if at high ranks, people size stepping up. Yeah, so there's no, there's no. There's, I'll, I'll just forget this. Just forget this low exists. It's only going to cause you more hurt than it is like reward. You, it's more risk than there is reward. It's not worth it. Just like Snake Edge from Brian, it's not worth it. Right, forget that. I'm going to go past it because I don't like it. Right, <clears throat> this move, this move been around forever. Minus 11 on block, that's great, but people will low parry this every time. Um, I suppose you could mix it up, you could just do this a few times. Like, it's not, you've got much better options, but you could just keep people guessing and do this, throw this out, and they know the low's coming. If you condition them to, it's got quite a good range actually. Oh my, plus over range too? Where am I? Bloody hell, it's got really good range. So just under 2.5 it's got really a range you can see Feng takes a step forward yeah it, I wouldn't want to say this has back to my property so I really don't think it does it's not a normal it's not a um, combo a normal hit don't think it's even a normal combo on counter hit oh ok on counter hit uh, normal hit combo 33 damage but when are you going to get that counter hit uh, someone explain to me if you do know if there is a way. Uh, what people will low parry this every time. This move's been around for a while. People know to low parry this, yeah. I used to think that you might be able to use it to spike down, but like to spike down and then get an unscaled low. That would be a nice way to use it if there was a way of doing that. Like you're doing your combo, yeah. Well, well, if you've got an unscaled hit, that'd be a lovely way to end the combo without needing a wall. And then it's a bit like Leroy's down back, uh, down two four. I think it is. That would be that would be decent if they made the second, if they made the second hit come out faster. Boom, boom, and you got the unscaled low. Then, then this move would be useful. It'd have its applications. At the moment, this move's useless. You might disagree with me, but I believe it's useless. <coughs> Uh, back four, uh, sorry, back one, as uh, Feng's infamous Iron Palm. People uh, hate Feng for this move. Uh, they don't seem to hate Yoshi for the flash, but they hate uh, Feng for a move that's four frames faster, uh, four frames slower. So, this move is unsafe, minus 10. Uh, but people don't really seem to punish it because by the time they've broke it, they've gone, oh! This has just come out, they try and they try and punish it and there's nothing like you can literally probably spam this. Like if someone tries to if they block this and they try and attack, you can probably <laughs> you can probably get away with it. Um This move is super good. He's like best counter here, I'd say. You don't get a launch, 
but you do get good damage. Um, yeah, like I say, you get a free shoulder. Uh, there is other things you can get, but generally, when you get this on counter hit, you want to get the shoulder for 44 damage. Uh, if someone's pushing buttons when they shouldn't be, like I, the, a way to set this up, down for one is zero on block. Yeah, if someone jabs you, tries to jab after a down for one, which people do in this game. That will stop them. And then once you've conditioned them to stop pressing buttons after you down forward one, yeah, you can you can just continue your offense after a block down forward one. Like people shouldn't really be pressing after his down forward one anyway. There's no need to. Well, it's, it's silly because it's zero on block. It's just super good. It is 14 frames, but zero on blocks like amazing, especially for Feng with the tools he has. So <clears throat> basically, there's there's not much more to say. This iron palm is a 10 frame, it's minus 10 on block, 10 frame counter hit string, uh, counter hit move, and you get your shoulder. Right, this is like Junkyard, so just so happens I have Law on here. Uh, see this move, this is Junkyard, everyone knows this move, uh, I don't think I'll be able to combo from it today. <laughs> uh, But everyone knows about this move. Yeah, this is Junkyard. Back two, three, four. Uh, let me get this. This is basically Feng's version of back two, three, four. This is Junkyard. The whole string is safe. It's to catch people sleeping. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it. This looks a little bit like this. They're going to presume a low's coming. Uh, and you're going to get low parried. Yeah? The move can these moves can be delayed. Yeah, but I don't really see a use for it. I don't know what happens if you hit him with the last hit. It forces crouch and you plus four, but nothing's guaranteed. Uh, another way you can use it. This is the only way I'd use this is if you use it as a wall ender. It's quite high damage because of all the hits, and you can delay the last hit. So a normal wear wall ender would be this. Nice and simple 60 damage. And this wall ender. 62 damage. So it hurts more than the shoulder. But you have to delay that last hit. But unscaled. Yeah, see how I'm delaying that? There. Okay. Moving on, I don't really want to mention this move because it's pretty useless. It's like this, up forward two, which I'll get to soon. It's not a great move. Uh, you could throw this out, it is delayable, so you can go bang, bang. The idea is you catch people with the block in the first one, and then you get that, which is obviously a launch for a small combo because of the axis. But overall, just saying, this isn't a great move. I wouldn't even bother. And it's high. Oh, it's mid high. Okay. It's something it's safe on block. Yeah, minus six. But they, they can duck that high. It doesn't jail. Okay. Uh, this on counter here is a natural string. It's pretty slow. It's just not a great move. But again, you catch someone who isn't too familiar to fend. You can get away with it. Right, this is uh, Run Shen Huan Wu. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This move is just a manual back turn. So if you've, you've conditioned people to respect you, which they should be anyway, this is a manual back turn. And again, you want to slide your thumb. I don't know if you can see it. Slide your thumb from three to four. Okay. That's how. That's the best way to do a tiller moves, in my opinion. Uh, when you're back towards the enemy, so this move, <clears throat> if you get this, this 12 frame jab. See how uh, Law holds his face there. You're plus 14. So the way to use this, you like that. People attack. So you're coming in, doing your business. People attack. Bang, boom. You get a free shoulder, and they've made this interaction easier. So I can, you can really confirm this now. Yeah. Brilliant. 
really, really good, really good option for that turn. And now, now they've made it easier. It says plus 14, but you've got so much time to confirm that. It's just silly. Really, really good. And also, it, it works to get that combo. One, down back one, four. Right, this is a mid from back turn, mid mid. Uh, the second hit on counter hit gives you a launch. Okay, didn't think that was going to miss. I think it's actually delayable as well. Yeah, heavily delayable. Yeah. Um, I think it's a normal, natural combo, normal hit, yeah, and you can get a mix up. You don't get anything for free. But a good option, you get the knockdown, and then you might get it down four. Yeah, you get it, okay, you might get it down four. So, for 34 damage, that's not bad. Uh, the main reason for using this would be... How am I going to combo off this, man? Why isn't that working? I thought that did work. Yeah. It's a good good counter here. So you can it's heavily delayable as well. Yeah. Uh hustle elbow. This move oh, I wanna say it's Okay, it is safe at minus five, that's really good. So this move is a gives you a knockdown on normal hit. The only thing about it, it pushes really far away. <laughs> Uh, and then after it, people like pushing buttons, and you've got down three to stop them. To catch them, this is a setup quite often people use. So they get the 10 frame, do that, it gets blocked, down three. But don't get used to doing that. Because um, people will get used to it, and they'll, they'll... I think that has a little bit of pushback on block. No, right. <clears throat> so it's safe, you are still in back turn. You, I think you can still get away, and you can still sidestep. But that's a better option. So you get this blocked, sidestep, hot kick, if they want to retaliate. Because the down three is just, it's risky. This is on clean hit. Feng has a lot of clean hit lows with launch. God, I can't even get further away enough that it's not, not to hit. Yeah, clean hit. Clean hit. I think even this is a clean hit. Yeah, clean hit. So, well, that that low is the same on all of these. Clean hit. I'm just going to talk about this while we're here. This move is risky. Minus 26, not punishable, just like all his, all his other lows which seem to launch. Um, I wouldn't get too used to using it. It's good if people want to retaliate after you can catch them. But it is risky. There's better options, yeah? Basically, Feng gets a lot of reward from his lows. Really good reward from his lows. And they're, they're kind of fast what they are. But they're, they're risky. Okay? And that's down three. Right. The Paolo Impaler. Paolo Impaler. I want to say, basically, this is a throw from back turn. Really good damage. Right? 50 damage. So... If, people, if you condition people to not duck and they just want to stand after they've been here, yeah, you're here, you get the grab, it's really hard to break, it is really fast. And it's a 1 plus 2. Uh, I think it's a 2 break, but it looks like a 1 plus 2. But what you can do is these turn into, so his normal grabs, these turn into command grabs from the back. So instead of doing uh, 1 plus 4 for the grab, uh, you can get these grabs off instead, and they still look like two, they still look like the same grabs as both hands still. So that's normal. That's one plus three. Yeah, that's the one grab just to show you. Uh, but from back turn, both hands. Yeah, same as that, both hands. So this is a throw mix up. Not a lot of people know that, but it can be handy. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Right, fish hook. One of, one of his best moves. I hear my cat sneezing. So back four. 
excuse me. Uh, really good range. It, is, it does have short range, but it has longer range than you think it has. Yeah. Plus two on hit or plus three, depending on where it hits. Uh, 12. This start up is 13. It's 12 frames. This move is 12 frames. Yeah. That said 13 there for some reason. Uh, this move is to catch people stepping. Yeah, and it's a fast mid. This mid is invaluable to Feng. Yeah, on block, minus nine. So it's like, he, Feng doesn't have a normal down forward two, uh, down forward one, yeah. His down forward one is 14 frames. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's great, it's minus nine, you lose the turn, but you can come back, yeah. This move, this move is a good move. Catches people stepping, track really well. Good low, uh, sorry, good mid. Any mid that's 12, any mid that's 13 frames or lower, like 12, 13, 14 frames, anywhere in that, in that sort of, in that range, really good mid. This is safe, yeah, really good poke. It's just to harass, yeah? It's just, it's just good. I can't explain it, it's just good. Uh, so this is Iron Fortress, back my bus two. This is, I think I've already spoken about this in the earlier part of the video, but this is his long range with Punisher. Okay, so if uh, I don't think Law has many moves with pushback, but basically it's 13 frames, really fast, really good shoulder. It's not the best shoulder in the game. I'd say Armor Kings is better. Uh, you have to be careful when you throw out because it's launch punishable. They can go make a cup of tea and come back and still launch it. Right. The Iron Fortress, the shoulder, is for a wall ender. It's highest damage wall ender, because it's as they hit lower it's unscaled. Well, less scaled, I should say. Um, like I say, launch punish one block. Uh, after that move you can hit the shoulder, 51. It's basically used for a long range with punisher. It comes from far away, yeah, but you can use this. If you're gonna get launched. You might as well use that than use that. It's faster though. Yeah. This is for this is for your hop kick punishes. This is your hop kick punish. Yeah, but make sure you're on it because it's perfect. It's the it's the same um, what's the word? It's the same speed as you need to punish a hop kick. So you need to make sure, especially when you're online, that you're ready to use that. Really good hop kick punish. 30 damage and a knockdown. That's sick. And at the wall. Uh, you get a wall splat. So as long as a hot kick at the wall, they're panicking. Boom, wall splat. Yeah. Right, deceptive step or back kempo, I call it. This is like forward kempo, but you don't get the built-in parry with it. I forgot to mention that by the way. You do get a built-in parry with this. But um, I'll demonstrate that now, actually, before I continue. That was the four tempo um, oh, the shifting clouds uh, parry. Yeah, parries mids and highs, punch and kicks, punches and kicks. While Feng is waving his hands, you'll parry. Doesn't matter how many moves are in the string. If it if it blocks two, yeah, you're gonna get it. I think it nullifies plus frames as well. getting beaten up by law now so yeah that's that right stop now mate so this isn't like that this this moves more for it's like a built-in korean backdash uh good panic moves if someone's pressuring you and they've got plus frames you can come back confirm a whiff and you can punish them for it so you can bait it with a well standing four on block someone blocks that excuse me you're at minus seven, you come back, and you've got all these options. You've got one, two, three, four, three plus four. So I'm gonna go through them all in one go. So this move, normal hit knockdown, free shoulder. Yeah, same as this. You wanna treat it as the same thing, but 
uh, back tempo version. Even looks the same. Yeah? Uh, back tempo 1, a nice chunky low, plus 8, and you can stay crouched or you can stand. Yeah? On counter hit, knock down, free stomp. I think you even get forward forward free. Yeah, for even 50 damage. Yeah? But if you want to make sure you get it, just go for the stomp. You haven't got a dash or anything, just do it. 45 damage, nice. Uh, what else is there? Plus 8 is really good for a low as well. And look at the damage. Yeah, it's 22 damage. Uh, what else have we got? Right, you got this, but it's hard to explain. If you're going to use... I'd rather use... That's minus 12, yeah? But I'd rather confirm the whiff and just hot kick because I just feel like the hot kick's faster. This is 23 frames, yeah? That's 15 frames. So you can confirm it, but instead of doing that, I'll just not use this move, really. I think you can use it to re-wall splash. Apart from that, this move ain't great. If you want to be safer, just use that. I'll just leave this out. Uh, this move, I use it to get over Rapukins. Uh, comes with, I think they've extended the range, actually. Um, he basically jumps over. It's like Brian's back back four. Same thing. Okay, if someone's rep especially against like uh, geese, or you think someone's gonna do a high, uh, sorry, you do a low. <laughs> someone's gonna do a low, and he gets up before the opponent, right? So uh, back tempo four, three plus four, and you're up. Uh, it is risky. You can get launched if it's blocked. You can get launched. So just watch that. It does look like it. I think it looks like it's even plus frames, but it's not. But you get the knockdown on normal here, right? But these moves are a bit... Mm, you can use them if you want to, but again, I wouldn't recommend it. This move, plus 9 on block, but he's pushed away. <laughs> it's 15 frames, 34 damage. If you're going to get 15 frames, you might as well still hop kick. This move, again, a little bit useless. There are better moves than that out there than this. I don't really know what this is for. I think it jails. I've tried it at the wall. I don't really know what, what it's for. Like, you get good plus frames, but at minus 15, you can punish even with a shoulder and it'd be better. Right, Death Palms is unblockable. Uh, one of the slower unblockables in the game. You're never really gonna hit anyone with this, so I might just skip this. Uh, I don't think there's a way of tech trapping anyone. He doesn't follow, you know, you're you, you, you going to die for that. Uh, this move, let me check into block. Oh, I don't know if this is plus one block or not. I'm just going to double check. So right, it's plus two, and it forces crouch. Yeah? And if you get this on here, again, another one of them moves that you wouldn't really use, but if you need to, you get a free shoulder. You don't get anything else. Yeah, you just get a free shoulder, 50 damage, 51 damage. But, again, why would you use that if, like, at the wall? I don't really understand what it's for. But if you, if you want plus frames, you're not going to use this, are you? You're going to use this. Uh, this is that evil claw I've used, talked about. I, I wish this force crouched. Or, or did something else other than plus four. If it forced Crouch and you were like, got something for free, then that'd be lovely, but you don't. So, it's just one of them moves you can throw out ever so often, crush as high as your plus four and you're in their face again. Yeah? Uh, again, another one of the parry baits. Right, this move is a lot more effective. This move is has a lot more application than the last couple of moves I spoke about. So, this move has a built-in sidestep left, a really good size step left as well like you're literally on their side yeah this is a get off me move so if someone's like pressuring you and coming in and going going ham on you you can just literally spam this yeah it's minus 10 but there's pushback like there's, there's literally nothing they can do about this they can obviously punch, don't do this but you could literally do this again and again and there'd be nothing they can do it's like um 
I think Jin has either up back four, up forward four, uh, up back two or up forward two. Same thing, the little sidestep punch. And on counter here, okay. On counter here, you get a knockdown. You don't get anything for free unless it's at the wall. I think at the wall, you get a free shoulder. If someone's attacking you, you get that, you get a shoulder. Really, really good move, just to get him out of trouble. Why do I keep doing that? Uh, right, this move. Uh, I wouldn't call it an, an orbital. This is like uh, Dragonov's up forward four. Crushes highs. Uh, at the side wall, you can get a bit more of a combo. Okay, it's not working, but it is possible. This move is to crush highs. Basically, I'll use it as Oki. So if I knock someone down, how the hell am I going to knock someone down? <laughs> so if I knock someone down and they get up and they, some people crouch as they get up, I'll do that to catch them. It tracks really well. Yeah? And it's mid and it's safe. Minus two. So if someone tries to do anything after this, you can parry. Yeah, you can do And another thing, Feng's parries are unchickenable, all of them. Minus two, really good move. I, I, this is one of my favorite moves, actually, I'd say. And you get your free damage if you get a knockdown. Good move, good frames. Uh, this is his hop kick. Uh, it's pretty terrible as hop kicks go, but it is a hop kick. Yeah, 15 frames to come out. Right, this move is interesting. And this is fast becoming a really like favorite move of mine. Uh, they they buff the crouching status and how fast the crouching status comes out of this move. So they lowered the amount of time it took for the crouching status to appear on this move. So this move is mid high high. Uh, I think on block it's minus six. So you can throw this out, but if your opponent is sharp and a better player, they can duck the last hit. But the way I throw it out is if people like pushing buttons after this, this goes under mids and highs. I've seen this go under mids. Yeah, so you down forward one, you're harassing someone, they start thinking it's their turn. Yeah? Down forward one, they start jabbing, you're going under it, and this is a launch. Yeah, this is how you launch. Really interesting move, I do like it a lot. When people get caught by this, I can imagine their face is like, what just happened? Uh, let me try and simulate this. Cool. See, I went under the jab. Went under the jab. That's how you use that move. See, I went under the jab. That's what this move's for. Or you can just go for damage and it's safe. It's up to you to finish it or not, okay? What else is there? Right, really good move. This is basically Demon Paw, but for thing. Completely safe. Minus 9. I think it used to be minus 10, but no one used to punish it anyway. Really good move. Really good range, yeah? He comes in from miles away. And it's safe. This is like a, again, another, <laughs> uh, what's the word? Getting in tool. If you wanna, you can, you do it out of crouch if you, if you double tap forward after crouch. So instead of doing that or that, if you wanna, if you wanna get a wall spat, you can go. Yeah, I'll use that quite a lot. But it's a gap closer. And it's a good Punisher, with Punisher, if you don't want to go for shoulder. This is a safe with Punisher, I'd say. It's like Demon Paw. Right, this move has been buffed. Uh, I can even get him to block it, it's quite slow. I have to do it manually. So, this move, plus 8 on block. Really slow, 32 frames, very slow. But don't underestimate this move. This move can also be done from back turn. Yeah. This move, I think on normal here, it knocks. Uh, I think it forces crouch, and you're like plus one million. All right, you're still plus eight, and it's a good chunky thirty damage. 
on counter here, big launch. Yeah, this is, what is this? 36 damage on a counter here. Yeah, and you get that. We're at 55 damage. I didn't even reach the wall, yeah? 109 damage. <laughs> That's pretty insane. But yeah, this moves like a pressuring tool. It is slow, but again, you can do it out of crouch. Out of, if you double tap forward after it, you catch people waiting for this. You can get plus rounds. It's basically pressuring. It's quite slow, but I would use this and settle for the four or the eight. Well, because of its speed, it was slow, but because of its speed, it was a bit more fun. 106 damage, it's not a joke. Uh, this move is a launcher. <laughs> uh, it's not fantastic. I can't seem to make it come out and block. So it's minus 15. The first hit is minus 15, yeah? We should just forget about this move. This is, we'll just call it a combo filler, right? That's what this move is. It's intended for a combo filler at the end. Uh, right, this move has been changed. So, we'll want four forward one plus two, uh, power crush, it's pretty slow as power crushes go. Uh, it's minus 12, but I think that's pretty fair because some moves, let me see if I can change this friend there. Now I've learned this, I'm quite interested in it. I think you can make it safer if you hold it. I think it's actually plus, yeah. Right, plus 11 from tip range. Yeah, that's not bad as power crushes go. It is pretty slow, uh, but you get a knockdown. It's not on my phone, sorry about that. Um, it's pretty slow as power crushes go. But it's only minus 12 or minus or minus 11. Go away. As I just demonstrated there. Uh, this used to be a launch. Uh, I think so. So it's plus three, yeah? This used to be like something plus silly. Uh, at the wall, you'd get a launch. Like a serious launch. You used to get that at the wall for like 100 damage. But now they've changed it, so if you hold it and someone walks into it, you get a free shot of 55 damage. As power crushes go, it's slow, but they've compensated for it. Yeah? It's only minus 11 to 12. Um, and if you hold it on blocks, plus, and if you hit someone with it, yeah, you're getting a shoulder. 55 damage, and at the wall, you can still get good damage. And if they block it, you're at the wall, plus four, that's still good. Yeah, 85 damage. Really, really good power brush. Well, good used properly, not great. Yeah? So it has its applications, but I wouldn't be throwing this out, like, just for no reason. I'd throw it out for a reason, all right? There's, you can't get anything from it. It pushes them so far away. But the wall, you hold it, you get that. Yeah? So... It has its uses, but it's not fantastic. Forward hold one plus two. So just to reiterate, on, if you hold it on hit, it's plus 14. If you just do it quickly, it's a knockdown. Uh, on block, minus 12. If you don't hold it, if you do, it's plus three. Okay? And then I'll talk about the plus frames on hit. Right, this, backswing blow. Uh, it's launch punishable. I wouldn't make a habit of using this. I didn't realise like the tip of tip range of stuff makes things safer. It's interesting. I have to research it a bit more. But this is if people come in uh, after they think it's well after it's their turn, you can steal your turn back. I'll show you what I mean. So you're harassing them. It's their go. You backswing blow. And you, I don't think that's a launch. I wish it was, but it's not. Just because of the angle that they fall, you get a free shoulder, right? Or I think you might even get a forward wall free. I can even do it. Come on. Yeah, so you get 51 damage. I think you can even get another stomp there.
Oh my days. Yeah, so there's a mix up after that. Yeah, but potentially you could get 75 damage for a battering blow. Oh, oh my god, if they get up, they get a shoulder. Okay. <laughs> so, you could use that, I guess. If they move, they get a shoulder. But they can block that, so just be careful. But this is a high risk. Sort of, you could say it's okay reward, high reward. Back to him, low. He moves way back. Like, this avoids a lot. Yeah? That's how you want to use it. Do stuff like this. Or, yeah? Right, we're going to talk about his crouch dash now. So, Feng has a lot of options from crouch dash. He can also cancel his crash, crouch dash uh, for his while standing, launch, uh, while standing moves. <coughs> so, we'll go through the options. You've got crouch dash 1, crouch dash 2, crouch dash 1 plus 2, which is my favourite. Uh, and you can use his while standing moves as well. So, lingering shadow is this. People use it, you call it a snake dash. Uh, you can chain the snake dash by tapping up to cause hesitation. Yeah? It can be done quicker than that. I'm just not doing it very well, but... Yeah, you can keep the opponent guessing when you're coming in. If you're quick enough, you don't even have to do the... You don't even have to um, do the crouch dash. You can just, The move will just come out straight away. See that? You can't even see the crouch dash. Same with that. So, crouch dash one is a nice chunky low, can't be low parried. Very important to know, it cannot be low parried. And you can extend the range by delaying it. So you can do the, you can either do it straight away for shorter range, yeah? Which is the long range is still good anyway. Yeah? Straight away, or from here, you can do almost two crouch dashes, but one of them is the actual move. So you can go bang, bang. But then it becomes more obvious. So it's up to you. Yeah? And on counter hit, this launches. For a pretty, that's pretty good for a low. Like, there's not many lows which launch like this nowadays. And it's, it's, it's like, not even that punishable. Uh, I think on block, minus 14. Right, that's not bad. For what it is, that's not terrible. And, it's obviously got its mix-up potentials. So if you want, uh, you don't have to use it. You can just use the crouch dash for pressure. Yeah? You can keep... You can just keep on them. Right, so you've also got crouch dash 1. Uh, crouch dash 2, which is... Uh, it looks very similar, but it's a launch on normal hit. Quite a high damaging launcher as well. If done properly. <laughs> uh, this move is unsafe. Minus 14 again. I wouldn't recommend this move. I'd sort of, out of all of them, I'd leave it. and just not use it. It's like a... You'd have to make a really hard read and really condition them with this first. Which you're still taking a risk to do. Yeah? So the main reason... You, you don't really want to use this. But the move you do want to use, as well as this, is... Crouch dash 1 plus 2. Again, if you do it fast enough, don't even do a crouch dash. Look how fast that is for a 1... It's 16 frame plus 4. The block. Yeah? That's no joke. 16 frame move, plus 4 on block. If you do it fast enough. It'll probably come out 17, 18, but still pretty fast. This move is like one of my favourite moves in the game. Right, this move has been buffed recently. Uh, in this last patch. Uh, it's now plus eight on block, uh, plus eight on here, and forces crouch. And on plus, it's plus four on block, uh, and leaves you closest to the opponent. Because before it used to leave you further away, which means you sort of nullified your pressure. But you're at down forward one range. Okay. On counter hit, this gives you a knockdown for a stomp. I don't think you get a forward forward free. No. So yeah. On counter hit, you get a knockdown. You get 44 damage. Nice and chunky. Right, something else you can do with his uh, Lingering Shadow or Crouch Dash is you can get his while standing moves out to add even more to the, uh, the plethora of options that he has. So, if you're conditioning people with this, 
which is a nice chunky low. People don't want to get hit by this. This is annoying low. This is a good comeback low, yeah? And the range on it is pretty insane. So if, you, if you're conditioning people like that, you can hold down forward for a tiny bit more. You think you can even do it? Yeah, you can just let go. Yeah, see how fast that is? Out of crouch dash. I'm doing I'm doing a while standing launcher. Yeah? And this while standing launcher is only minus 12. That's why you don't use this. Yeah? If you're going to use this at minus 14, you might as well use that. Yeah? It's not much difference in damage. By the time you get into the wall, there's not much in it. That's still a solid 86 damage. That's half their life. Uh, what else have you got? So you've got, while standing, one out of crouch dash. This is good. You can extend the range by, by holding down forward longer. Yeah? Really good. Really good approach, sure. And obviously, you've got your crouch dash while standing forward. Uh, and also, something else I want to note while I'm here, uh, while I'm at this point in the video, is you've got a safe mid launcher for crouch dash. Okay? Crouch dash while standing too or while standing to on its own, you get a mini combo. And that sounds like not a lot because you've got this at minus 12, and you can go for that if you want, but say it's tournament conditions, that's 15 frames, so is that. Yeah, and also, off. also you can parry after that. Or you can, you're not getting punished, put it that way, so that's pretty good. This move, you're not gonna get a full combo, but, you can actually get that combo, which can wall splat, 46 damage by the time you've finished it. You're on about 75, nearly 80 damage. So don't neglect this move, yeah? It crushes highs. You can come in, if you've, if you've been conditioning with this, yeah? You can either come up with this for minus 12, which sometimes weirdly doesn't get punished, even when people try and 10 frame it. Or you can come up with a safer option, which is that, yeah? Max damage, 47 damage. For a safe launcher like that, the crush is high, is, that's pretty good. Or, if you really want to get technical, but it's a little bit harder, you can do uh, down forward free straight away, but it's hard. If you have to tap forward or tap up very fast. I can't, I can't do it every time. So, in that case, you stick to that. I've not been through the options now. Right, so severing sword is his, his slash kick. It's kind of slow as slash kick go. It's not great. Um, it wall splats. Uh, it's plus six on block. That was actually quite fast for me, weirdly. Which is good. It's just a normal slash kick. Uh, I do get floated out with this quite a lot. If you want to use this for plus frames, don't bother. Yeah, he's got more options. Even that's a better option than that. Or that. I'd, I'd go for... Oh yeah, that's plus nine. That, this is like a new thing for me. Like all this varying plus frames depending on the uh, distance and stuff. Right. So anyway, that's what I was doing before I started losing my mind. His slash kick is not very good. I'll just leave it out. If you're going to try, if you want to approach the opponent, don't slash kick. Yeah, it's slow. It's like he floats. It's like he's doing the matrix or something. Yeah, if you want to come in, uh, use use his headbutt. Use um, crouch f one plus two instead. Yeah, it's faster and it's mid and it's safe and it's plus. Okay, just try and try and forget that move. Mishima's slash kicks are a little bit better. Feng's slash kicks a bit shit. Right, while standing options. His while standing game is pretty terrible, to be honest. I don't want to go over this move too much. Um, you can delay the last hit, I believe. And if the second hit counter hits, you get the second, you get the third hit free. It's only minus twelve. It's not great. I can't even make the first hit miss. So it's, it's not very good. This is basically what you're going to get. 26 damage for a 14 frame punish from Crouch, yeah? And 
and you can delay that, but I just there's no need for it really. It's not a very good move. Uh, I already spoke about that. Uh, while standing two, decent move, underrated in my opinion. Uh, while I was in three, is the bow kick, the launcher from while standing three, uh, from crouch dash or just while standing, really good. I use it to bait people after this on, on block. They come in, boom, you launch them, yeah? But... Uh, while standing, this is basically his... Yeah, it's while standing four, it's pretty standard as while standing fours go. Uh, on counter hit, gives you a lot of plus frames. That's plus 29, but... Uh, it doesn't guarantee you anything. People think that you're guaranteed a shoulder, but you're not. What you're guaranteed is a mix-up potential. Yeah? So the low, or that. You know what I mean? So what you want to do is go, okay, well, I'm plus 29. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go crouch dash one, or I'm going to come in and go fast and three. Yeah, and they, they have to respect that, basically. But they don't respect that, they're, they're not very clever. Put it that way. Um, I think the wall, you get more guaranteed. I've seen people sidestep and like make little setups and stuff, but in general, you just want to know, yeah, you get a dash, you get a dash up mix up, or you get a crouch dash mix up off the of wild standing for counter hit, okay? Right, <laughs> right, this move, Oh, how am I going to demonstrate this? It's going to be one of my more than annoying moves. So, you see this. This is how I'm going to explain it. This move, when you hold it, the 4 for 1 plus 2 power crush, you get a free shoulder. Now, if I'm going to demonstrate this, it's basically the same thing, but it's a parry. Okay? Yeah, see that? Uh, one way of using it is probably with a down 4, because you're not... Like, I can't explain it. You want to use it on a low, which is minus. Yeah? Sorry, let me just stop that for a minute. You want to use it on a low, that is minus, if you really want. Some people will push buttons after down back three. Some people will push buttons after down two, down four. Oh, sorry, full patch four. You want to use it on a low that you don't lose, you're not too minus on, then you can come up. And if someone really tries to react, because people are silly, you can get them with that. You used to get that launch, but you don't anymore. You, I think you get a shoulder. Yeah, 50 damage. So it is usable, I suppose. But it's just pretty useless as, as moves go. You could use it. If you really wanted to, I wouldn't recommend it. It's one of the moves. If you're like a, if you're in party mode, fair enough. Yeah, but it's not. It's not a move that you want to keep using all the time. Right, if you're feeling cheeky at the wall, you probably could. If you've got a down four and you can't run back, if they're going to retaliate, you're playing against Steve or someone you know jabs a lot, yeah? You can come up with that, get a parry, get a shoulder, and you've got three walls back. Right, this move, the silent arrow, uh, you can use it out of, the way I use it, you use it out of a down back four, you plus four, and you come up with that. They can stop you, but if they retaliate with anything other than a dick jab or something, yeah, or a hop kick. They're gonna get counter hit. Excuse me. They're gonna get counter hit, and you get a free stomp. I think you even get a free mini juggle if you're fast enough. Pretty sure that does work. Right, I can't seem to get it to work now, but I've seen people do it. But you do get a free stomp. I crouch cancel to make sure that stomp comes out, but. I don't know if you do have to, but I'd crouch cancel anyway, and just make sure you get the stomp, and I think it's like 41 damage. Yeah. Alright, so that's what that's for, just to get a knockdown. Uh, this is also a good move, you see how I'm moving forward? Yeah, you're harassing, you're doing your feng business, harassing, yeah? That, it's just to keep them guessing, yeah? Kind of, a, it is a good low, good chunky low, look. So you get 
19 damage for a low like that. It's not bad. Full crouch. You can get it out of this. Uh, this. This is one of the moves. Instead of coming up while standing four, you can even get in and come down with another low. Yeah? It's only minus 12. So it's pretty good for a low. Right, while so <laughs> See, now this is a mix-up. <clears throat> so if you come in like this, and you're plus four, and people start respecting this move and stop pressing buttons. Yeah? Or you're doing this, and people start thinking you're going to do this again. You do that instead. Yeah? Launch on normal here. And I think this is quite safe as well. Alright, it's minus 14. So if they block that, you could be in for quite a while to hurt, but you're not going to get punished too hard. It depends who you're playing against. Law will get a 3 plus 4, they'll probably launch you. But you could also use this as. It basically, it's used for a mix up for this. Yeah? Really good move still. I, I quite like it. When I hit this on a launch, when I actually launch some of this, I feel good about it because it's so cool. It's a really, really cool move. It's quite damaging as well. Okay, so just use it. That is the application for it. You use it as a mix-up when you're when you're like a dick jab and then do that, or you're keeping them. You're keeping it fresh. Yeah, you're mixing it up with crouch dash. Uh, sorry. Uh, full crouch one, or you coming in like that, that. You understand? Right, during size step, this move is buffed. Uh, it's plus one on block, uh, plus three on block. <clears throat> it used to be nothing like that. I think it was plus one, so not even that was guaranteed. But this move used to be a lot less useful. Now um, they've been buff. It's been buffed. You can throw this out from range. Apparently it's homing as well, which is decent. I never knew that, but it's got really good range. It comes out from nowhere. Yeah, obviously the, the closer you use it, the better position you're going to be in to use it. Yeah, if you use it from further away, you could whiff. Um, so you can just catch people stepping. It is a high, so be careful. But on block, plus three, yeah. Uh, if someone retaliates, you can move away and then bait but generally you want to catch people slipping with that but it is high high so what speed is this that's 16 that's 16 so mm, you'll trade with anything slower or the same speed as the downboard one yeah so you either do a mid after that if people are respecting you or you do this so on block you plus three if they retaliate, bang, bang. And there's nothing they can do about that. They have to either backdash, parry, or crouch. Yeah, I think that's its general intent. Stop people stepping, for one. Because you can sort of hide the sidestep. So it's basically a homing high. As that's probably the fastest homing move that Feng has. Uh, like I say, just to reiterate, plus three, jab, shoulder. Don't use that as a flow chart, but you're plus three. This is the only thing that, that will stop them doing anything. Yeah? God, do you know what I'm going to forget about this move? This move is just fucking awful. Just try and forget this move even exists. I haven't found an application for it yet, okay? Uh, this is the clean hit sweep that I've spoken about before, minus 31 on block, uh, rewarding on hit, obviously on clean hit, um, on clean hit it launches, you're still going to get launched if you don't get, if you're not in clean hit range, yeah, it's still launch punishable from out here than it is from here, so you need to make sure you're like in their face, yeah, doing your, your feng stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just doing doing what you need to do. Uh, that's not even a combo. But keeping it fresh, little crouch cancel while standing four. They might uh, sorry, side step four. They might think uh, you're gonna do that. Instead, you do that. You know what I mean? It's all just to create a hesitation and make this a more viable move. Because it is a good sweep. Yeah? It's fast. 
for what it is, 21 frames ain't bad. That you're almost in hell sweep like uh, frame data there. But they will be used to it because this move's been around forever. Yeah, it's pretty infamous. So you need to keep it fresh. So in order to do that, you do you're doing this. You go, okay, what am I doing? What am I doing? Boom. Uh, one of my favourite moves. <coughs> I literally spam this move. Right, so it's plus one on block. Uh, stop being hit for. Plus one on block. And what does that favour? Jab strings or back one, especially. So if anyone pushes buttons after that, people don't realise that's plus one. He has a little bit of a stagger to it, a little bit of pushback. It's plus one. Especially at the wall, look at this. Yeah? Yeah, that's pressure. Back one, and you'll get the wall splat if they press buttons. And then you get 50 damage for a shoulder. Yeah? That's, this is how I use this move. Just to keep people guessing between this and the, the side step forward. Why are you blocking that, Lord? I was blocking that, Right, so... Um, yeah, that's what this move's for. For wall pressure and your plus on block. And people don't really realise that. And you can keep your offence going. Okay? Yeah? Plus one is good. Uh, spring up is... I will explain this. Uh, if I can do it without getting... Stay down. How do I get on the floor without... Mm. Right, basically... See this move here, that, this launches, this is a special spring kick. Yeah, so instead of 3 plus 4 and then causing damage, excuse me, oh. instead of causing damage, you'll cause a launch. Right, but be careful because you can get launched for using it. Uh, that's your stomp. I need to stop regarding everything. This is basically a stomp, right? <laughs> There's not much more I can say about it. I need to, that's what this is, your stomp. Uh, this is just his taunt, it has no real purpose. It's a pretty cool taunt, this taunt's go. Uh, we're gonna skip 10 hit combos because they're not really useful. Uh, this is his, that's not. This is his one grab. Well, this is his generic grabs. These can be broken with either button. Uh, for, I'm just going to explain this to people who don't know. Forward extends the range of your throw. So that's normal. Sorry. That's normal. That extends it. See how far he's leaning in? So obviously it makes the break more obvious. So that's what that is. Uh, what else have we got now? Uh, these are just like the approach from different sides. Like the different throws that you get. Yeah? Uh, this is his command grab. Has to be broken with 1 plus 2. Uh, pretty good OK. Uh, you, they have to respect you after. Uh, 40 damage. They, it leaves you next to the opponent, which is the, the important thing about it. Right, this attack reversal. Now, there's two different ones. One for a 2... Uh, sorry. He has two reversals, one for a two grab, uh, one for a two punch, one for a one punch. All right, so one for a one for grab, one jab, one for a two jab. So if I get Law to attack me again, hopefully I can time this right. That was a two. Try again. Oh my day, go away, right. That's two. God, this is going to be hard. I can't seem to get the other one, but the other one flips him over. This is annoying me now, I can't show both. That's the two, which pushes him away. I can't seem to get the other one off, but 
Let me just demonstrate this a little bit better. Uh, with a downfall of one of them. Right. So, you've seen the other one. That's the other one. And if you will get up here, you get a shower. Yeah? That's the two. And that's the one. If they get up incorrectly, they get a shoulder. Alright, and I do that shoulder anyway. If I get launched, so what? It's worth the damage. Uh, shooting clouds, like I said earlier, was already a parry. There's also a parry, and we're back to his rage art. Um, trying to think of anything else I want to talk about. <coughs> I want to talk about his game plan quickly. So, thing, <coughs> to get the most out of him, he has a pretty. Uh, he doesn't get launches off loads of things without taking risks. What he does get is he gets knockdowns without taking a lot of risk at all. So you'll, you'd, you'd prefer knockdowns over launches when you play fair. Just because, yeah, his stomps and Oki and things like that, yeah, they all add up. His hop kick is about his hop kick is rubbish, but he makes up for it in utility for his sweeps and his like pressure gain and mix ups with his. Like zero on block down forward one and the, the way he keeps the opponent guessing he's not he doesn't get shit loads of damage uh, and lots of he hasn't got many ways of getting launches without taking risk like that's minus 14 yeah that's minus 14 um, that's minus 14 but like all these obscure moves are quite unsafe yeah, but the ones that aren't unsafe, like moves like that, which cause knockdowns and free damage, you want to get most of your damage from counter hits, back one, which causes a knockdown. You want to bait the opponent into coming to you and thinking it's their turn. It's never their turn. When you play Feng, it's your turn. You want to treat like it's your turn all the time, yeah? With good spacing, yeah, he's got good long range pokes, good, good ways of getting in. Yeah, this is what you want to do. You want to trick the, the opponent into thinking it's their fucking turn, and it's not. It's your turn. Yeah. You want to, you want to be so obscure and so fresh all the time to keep the opponent guessing that they don't know when it's their turn, and that's when you win. Because you're going to do a down forward, you're going to do a while standing forward. They're going to come in, and you're going to launch them for it. Or back four, they're going to come in, you're going to launch them for it. They think it's their turn. You get a parry, or you block their their uh, move. They think that you're attacking still, you're not, and you get a chunky low. Yeah, it's all about deception. Feng's, Feng's a really deceptive character, but you think you're near him, you're not. You're not. Okay? But, um, I didn't mean to rant on a little bit. Uh, obviously, I've been talking for nearly two hours now. <laughs> um, sorry. Excuse me, I haven't had any breakfast or anything like that, but I needed to get this video out uh, for everyone that wants to watch it. Uh, I'm sorry if I ranted on. Uh, I'm trying to learn to pronounce my words better and not ramble on and not mumble so much and maybe not have such a monotone voice, but it's quite hard. I'm not used to um, commentating and things like that, but hopefully it'll get better as I go on. Um, I have a really sore throat now. I'm not. I'm quite a quiet person. I never really speak so much, too much. But um, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it was educational um, for people who are thinking about getting into Feng and want to enjoy Tekken as a whole. Because Feng is quite a neglected character, and he is really he is super super strong, and he can be played. No Feng players are alike. He can be played so many ways that I feel like he gets neglected and gets sort of. Uh, picked on a little bit of being like this bad character or he's really difficult to play and things like that, he's not. He's just really fun. And people who like expressing uh, their style and they like it, like showing the, their personality in a character, that's what Feng is used for, for that reason. Alright, but uh, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe. Uh, there'll be more of these videos coming up, hopefully they're a bit better quality than this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.